If you're just getting into Bitcoin, chances are you've heard of the terms public key and private key. But what exactly are these? In this video, I'm going to explain public and private keys, what they are and what they do. And I'll explain it in such a way that anyone can understand it. Public and private keys are important because without them, you can't send or receive transactions. So let's have a look at what they are what they do and how they work. So to start, we're just gonna form a base layer of understanding of secret message sending and why these are important. And so we're gonna go back a few years before the 1970s when this sort of cryptography was created and we're gonna send a secret message to each other. I'm gonna send a secret message to you and that secret message is going to be hello. But I don't want anyone else to know what it says. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to encrypt this message with a key or with a cipher. And in this case, it's a really simple one and that's shift one forward. So for every letter in the alphabet, we're going to shift it one letter forward. So H becomes I, E becomes F, L becomes N and O becomes P. And so rather than sending you the message hello, which anyone could read, I'm going to cipher it and what spits out is this message, I F M M P. And so if we send that, then people might intercept it and be able to read I F M M P, but they don't understand what that means. Now, this is a very simple code and could easily be broken, but this is just laying the groundwork. If we shift over to you now, you have now received this message from me. You know the key. So you know that it's shift one forwards. So all you need to do is reverse that key and shift one backwards. And then I becomes H, F becomes E, M becomes L and P becomes O. And so you then decipher that message and it becomes hello. Now the problem arises when we're on other sides of the world, we both need to know this key. Otherwise this whole thing doesn't work. But how can I encode and encrypt and send you that key over the internet without anyone finding out about it. And this is where public and private keys pay a really important role in solving this problem. So using advanced cryptography, rather than just having the one key that we had back here that we both need to know, we now have two keys that are related to each other. So we take key one, we run it through cryptography and get key two and key one at acts as the locking mechanism and key two is needed to unlock or to decipher the code. And so these two work together. So what happens is we take our hello message, we encode it using key one and we get this message that no one can read. Now in order to decipher that, we need key two to get to back to our hello message. So if we take key one, get this garbled message and then try and use key one over here, to try and turn it back into hello, that's not going to work. We can only decode it with key two. And so these two are related. And so the way this would work on the internet is I would take my public key and I would share it all over the internet with the world. I would post it on Facebook, I'd post it on my Instagram with a picture of me on the beach. You know, I would post it all over the world. And so everybody knows my public key, but only I know my private key. So my private key is secret to me, but everybody knows my public key. And so what would happen if you want to send me a message or if anyone wants to send me a message? So my dad could send me a message or the Prince of Nigeria could send me a message about how he wants to give me $7 million. So either of those two people could take the message and then encode it using my public key. And then they would get a message that nobody could read. And the only way to decipher this message is with my private key. So they send this message over the internet. It doesn't matter who captures or sees this message because they can't read it. Only I with the private key can decode that message either into hello from my dad or into, hey, I wanna send you $7 million if you only send me a couple of thousand dollars to release the funds from the Prince of Nigeria. And the reason this works is that the private key is so big and so difficult to work out that it would take millions and millions and millions of years, even with highly advanced computing in order to guess that private key correctly. So the chances of someone guessing that private key are very, very, very close to zero. 
it will take people millions of years to crack it. So it's not feasible for people to crack it. So this is why this works. Bitcoin takes this technology and reverses it. So let's say I want to send one Bitcoin to Bob. I would represent that as I want to send from my public key to Bob's public key. Now let me show you an example. Here's a transaction here. This is someone sending from this particular public key to that particular public key. So that is the transaction and then it's hashed, which we will talk about in a second. So basically this is me and I'm saying I want to send money from me to Bob, but I need to prove that I can actually send that money. So let's sidetrack very quickly and talk about our public key. So a public key is used in decryption, but it's also used as a safety box. So let's say this is a safety box and anyone can deposit funds into this safety box, but our private key can only unlock funds from this safety box, or really, more realistically, our private key is used to take money out of this public box and give it to someone else. So anyone can use my public key and send money into this box. So we can fill up this box with as much money as we want without ever knowing or having the private key. So you could create a public key and you could send as much money as you want there and if no one ever knows the private key or ever has it then that money will be locked in that box forever so our public key acts as a lock box but as we'll see it also acts as a way of decrypting our messages and proving that we have the lock that we have the key to this lock to go ahead and unlock the box so i hope i haven't lost you yet so I want to send one Bitcoin to Bob. So I'm sending it from my public key to Bob's public key. So that is the message. So what we do with that message is we then take our private key and we use our private key with the help of cryptography to encrypt that message and to create a hash. So to create an encrypted message. If we look on blockchain.info, then we can see the hash up here. Okay, so this is the hash of this transaction. So I take the transaction and I use my private key to go ahead and create the hash or create the encryption. Now my public key is available on the network. Everybody can see my public key. In fact, it's even in the transaction that, hey, this is my public key. And so as before, where we talked about how key two can unlock key one, Key one in this case is our private key and only key two can unlock or decipher the message. In this case, it's our public key. So I've taken the transaction and used my private key to encode it. And then anyone can use my public key and that will successfully decode the message. So that will take this hash by using my public key and that will decode the message to say that I am sending in this case 0.016 Bitcoin to this address or in my example it will decode the message and say that I am sending one Bitcoin to Bob. In fact the public key is created by starting with a private key using cryptography to then create the public key. So these two the private key and the public key are linked together. So there will only ever be one private key that matches up with the public key. You can't have multiple private keys for a single public key. In fact, if you go to bitaddress.org, you can create one yourself. So this is using randomness of my mouse to go ahead and to create a random private key, which will then generate a public key as well. So let's move our mouse around the screen here. We'll do some little dots up here move it around till we get to 100% and we will see that I've now got a private key and I've now got a public key. Now I'm not actually going to use these because people have my private key, they could access those funds, but this is giving you a great example of your public key and your private key. So what's to stop someone hijacking an account and simply putting a transaction out there saying that they want to send one Bitcoin to criminal? So they want to go from a certain public key and because all the public keys are out there, you could choose any one. So let's say they want to go from a certain public key. They want to send it to the criminal. They want to send it to themselves. And what's to stop them using a made up private key in order to get the encoding? Well, the problem with that is that the public key that you start with. So if we go back and look at this transaction, 
So this public key is sending money to this public key. So the public key that you start with is used to decode the message. And so if this criminal makes up their own private key, this public key won't be able to decipher this message. It'll take this message and try and decipher it and what will come out will just be some more gobbledy gook. Okay, so it won't decipher the message and so we know that that person doesn't have the private key. And so this is how private and public keys work in Bitcoin. Now this is a simple explanation. I'm sure that cryptographers out there are really angry at me right now, but I hope that this has helped you to understand the basic premise of how this works. So just a quick recap, the public key is our lockbox. It's the place that anyone can send money, but no one can take money out of this lockbox without the private key. And the way they take money out of the lockbox is that they create a transaction, they encode it using the private key, and then they display that encoded message to the entire network, to all the Bitcoin nodes, to everybody out there. And everybody out there is then able to use the public key to decode that message, which proves that you have the private key and that you're authorized to send that money. And so once you've proven that, then the money will be sent, the transaction will go through, it's added to the block, and you no longer have access to that money. Bob now has that one Bitcoin, and he'll then need his private key in order to send money from his lockbox to someone else. So there you have it, that is Bitcoin private keys and public keys explained in a simple to understand format. Do you have any more questions? Are you still confused about this topic? If you are, please leave a comment in the description below. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. Please go ahead and like it. That helps spread this message to more people and allow more people to understand how Bitcoin works. If you wanna learn more about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, go ahead and check out one of my videos. I'm making new tutorials every single day so people like yourself can understand how this revolutionary technology works. And while you're here, don't forget to click the subscribe button as well.